In this lesson, I'll introduce you to Amazon monitoring services, specifically CloudWatch and CloudTrail. CloudWatch is a pre-programmed built-in monitoring system used to monitor AWS infrastructure. It's designed to facilitate performance reporting requirements and provides basic level monitoring at five minute intervals and can be configured to provide detailed monitoring at one minute intervals, but includes an additional cost. No additional software needs to be installed to capture CloudWatch metrics. CloudWatch provides monitoring for Amazon EC2 instances, including CPU utilization, data transfer, disk usage, and status. CloudWatch also provides metrics for other AWS services, including DynamoDB, Amazon RDSDB, as well as many other services. CloudWatch provides the ability to create your own custom metrics, generating data by your own applications. CloudWatch provides CloudWatch logs, which help you to monitor and troubleshoot your systems and applications using your existing system, application, and custom log files. With CloudWatch, you can set alarm thresholds on your metrics and trigger automated actions to take when exceeded, as well as generate notifications. In CloudWatch, you can create reusable graphs and statistics of AWS resources and your custom metrics. Metric data is kept for a period of two weeks. CloudTrail is a web service that records all AWS API calls for your account and delivers log files to your S3 bucket. API activity data includes identity of the API caller, time of the API call, source IP address of the API caller, request parameters, and response elements returned by the AWS service. CloudTrail provides a history of all API calls, including API calls made via the management console, the command line interface, and the various SDKs, including API calls made on your behalf via higher level AWS services, such as Elastic Beanstalk and AWS CloudFormation. CloudTrail uses Amazon S3 for storage of your log files. CloudTrail can be configured to publish a notification for each log file delivered. Numerous partners, including AlertLogic, Boundary, Logly, Splunk, and Sumo Logic offer integrated solutions to analyze your CloudTrail log files. CloudTrail can be configured to aggregate log files across multiple accounts and regions so that log files are delivered to a single bucket. AWS monitoring, which includes CloudWatch and CloudTrail, enables you as an administrator to set thresholds on predefined alarms against various metrics that you can respond to both programmatically with automated actions as well as notifications that allow you to respond to anomalies in your infrastructure. In this example, I'll introduce you to CloudWatch alarms. CloudWatch alarms monitor a single metric over a period of time, and you can perform one or more actions based upon exceeding predefined thresholds for a period of time. Alarms trigger actions for sustained conditions, and not simply because the current state of the metric has surpassed a predefined threshold. CloudWatch alarms can be configured to send notifications or make changes to your Amazon resources based upon predefined rules. For example, you can monitor CPU utilization and then use this data to determine when to launch additional instances by triggering an action on an auto-scaling policy. You can also use rules to determine when to remove instances from an underutilized auto-scaling group. Basic monitoring of EC2 instances provide metrics every five minutes. So set an alarm on basic metrics over a period of at least five minutes. Detailed monitoring of EC2 instances provides metrics for every one minute. So setting an alarm on a detailed metric can be triggered on a period of at least one minute. An alarm has three possible states. OK, the metric is within the predefined threshold. Alarm state, the metric is outside of the predefined threshold insufficient data, the alarm has just started, the metric is not available, or not enough data is available for the metric to determine an alarm state. You can create up to 5,000 alarms per AWS account. When you navigate to the CloudWatch console, the console displays a metrics summary, an alarm summary, and a service health. From the CloudWatch console, you can create customized dashboards that display the current status of pre-specified metrics. The alarm status displayed on the left side of your screen shows alarms broken out by state. To create an alarm, click on the alarms link on the left-hand side of the display. The alarm console will display, then click Create Alarm. 
The Create Alarm dialog box will walk you through the process of configuring an alarm. You first need to select a metric on which to base your alarm. You can do this by clicking on a resource category, a metric type, or by providing a keyword in the search field. For example, I'll click on the per instance metrics under the EC2 metrics category. I will then select the instance ID for CPU utilization. I can then click next to define the alarm. In the name field, provide a name. For this example, I'll provide the name My Alarm. You can provide a description in the description field. Then specify a threshold condition. In this example, I'll specify a threshold when CPU utilization is greater than 90% for one consecutive period. The alarm preview indicates that this alarm will trigger when CPU utilization, represented in blue, goes above the threshold indicated by the red line for a period of five minutes. In the actions portion of the screen, I can configure what action to take when the state changes to alarm, as well as where to send the notification. In this example, I'll select my topic. In the email list field, I can specify which SNS topic subscribers should receive notification. For this example, I'll leave it at its default, which is a single subscriber to the selected topic. I can configure additional notifications, auto-scaling actions, and EC2 actions by clicking on the respective buttons below. For this example, I'll select an EC2 action and configure it to stop the instance if it exceeds the threshold defined for this alarm. AWS will create the following IAM role in your account so that AWS can perform the action. Select the Create IAM Role checkbox. When satisfied with the alarm configuration, click Create Alarm. When the alarm has been created, it will be listed in the Alarms Display list. To modify, copy, or delete the alarm, select it from the Alarm Display list and click the respective button. When an alarm is selected, the details will display below. To view the history of an alarm, click the History tab. To modify which columns to display, click on the gear icon on the upper right-hand side of the screen and select the checkboxes for which columns to display. In this tutorial, I'll introduce you to Amazon CloudTrail, a service that captures and logs AWS API calls made by or on behalf of an AWS account. CloudTrail log files are stored in an Amazon S3 bucket that you specify and configure with an appropriate access policy. CloudTrail as a service does not cost, but S3 storage and SNS notification rates apply. While you can store your log files indefinitely, you can also define lifecycle rules to automatically archive or delete them. In general, CloudTrail delivers log files within 15 minutes of an API call, and the service publishes new log files approximately every five minutes. Log files contain API calls from several services supported by CloudTrail. Some of the services that CloudTrail supports include EC2, EBS, and IAM. For a comprehensive list of supported services and regions, refer to the CloudTrail documentation. IAM can be used to control which AWS users can create, configure, or delete trails, start and stop logging, and access buckets containing log files. To get started with CloudTrail, you first need to create a trail. From the CloudTrail console start page, click the Get Started button. From the Turn On CloudTrail page, enter a trail name. In this example, I will enter My Trail. In this section, Apply Trail to All Regions, you can select Yes to create the same trail in all regions and deliver log files for all regions. Or, in this example, I'll just select No. Next, to create a new S3 bucket, select Yes to create a new S3 bucket, or No to select an existing bucket. If you select No, use the pull-down list to select an existing bucket and manually apply permissions. In this example, I will select Yes to create a new bucket. Provide a unique bucket name, and CloudTrail will create the bucket and apply appropriate permissions. I will enter a bucket name called xapi.org hyphen my trail bucket. Under the Advanced tab, there are three additional sections that will appear. If you want to provide a prefix to make log files easier to browse, provide it in the Log File Prefix field. In this example, I'll add a prefix called Logs. You can enable Log File Validation, which determines whether a log file was modified, deleted, or unchanged after CloudTrail delivered it. 
and send SNS notifications for every log file delivery, which sends notification of log file delivery so that you can take immediate action. For this example, I will select No under both Advanced Options. To enable CloudTrails, click the blue button in the lower right-hand side of the screen, labeled Turn On. CloudTrail starts publishing files within approximately 15 minutes. When the trail has been successfully created, it will display in the trails list. To modify or configure your newly created trail, click the link under the name column. Under the section labeled S3, you can see the name of the S3 bucket for this trail and the prefix used for log files. If you want to encrypt log files, click the pencil icon to the right side of the S3 section to enter edit mode and then click the advanced link. From the advanced link, you can turn on encrypt log files and then click save. In this example, I will leave encrypt log files at its default of no. To enable optional CloudWatch logs, click the blue configure button under the CloudWatch logs section. From the new or existing log group field, provide a log group name, then click the continue button. AWS CloudTrail will deliver CloudTrail events associated with API activity in your account to your CloudWatch logs log group. To deliver CloudTrail events to CloudWatch logs, you must provide an IAM role with permissions to two CloudWatch log API calls, including create log stream and put log events. In the details section, provide a role name, and then click the allow button to confirm. In this example, I'll introduce you to auto-scaling. Auto-scaling is a system in which EC2 instances can grow or shrink in their numbers in order to accommodate demand. This example is just going to demonstrate kind of how the process works. This slide deck consists of two graphic displays. The top display reflects CPU utilization with the upper and lower thresholds, and the lower display demonstrates the number of EC2 instances over time, and in this example, it will be between 1 and 10. The rules at the top I have configured with an upper threshold of 90% for one consecutive minute and a scale in rule by one. So if utilization exceeds 90% for a period of time, it will add one, scale out by one, and if it falls below 20%, it will scale in by one. Cooldown is a concept that basically delays any reactions for a period of time just to kind of give the system time to, to stabilize and accept traffic. In this first example, I'm starting with one instance, as indicated at the lower left-hand side of the screen. Now I'm showing some demand in that same period of, let's say, less than 20%. So no scale in or scale out by rule applies. It's still within that lower threshold. But because I have a minimum set to one, it'll never drop below the minimum. Now let's show that we have a increase in traffic or in CPU utilization at 50%, and I basically maintain one instance. And the reason for that is that as long as I stay between that upper and lower threshold, then I'm not going to get any scale in or scale out by action. However, in this next period, from 2 to 3, I have CPU utilization exceed 90% traffic, in which case I will get a scale out by one applied, resulting in two instances now serving traffic. If I sustain at that 90%, I still don't get a scale in or scale out by rule initially because of the cooldown period. So it's going to wait for a period of time to give that instance time to get up to speed and start accepting some traffic and distributing it. If traffic falls drastically, let's say after 5 o'clock or so, let's say to 10%, then I still won't get an initial reaction. But if it persists at that state, then I will eventually get a drop or a scale in by action applied, which results in it dropping down to the one instance, which is the minimum.